Well, hello and welcome to another uh, episode of uh, Not in Shawscope. Um, this one uh, follows on from a previous Not in Shawscope where we uh, wandered further than we've ever wandered away from uh, Shaw before. Um, so we watched a film. Uh, what was what was that that film called, Clive? It was about this um, this horrible uh, middle ages uh, tyrant uh, out of Korea. Um, I sense. Have you have you noticed, Darren? You can tell when Nick's gonna tell a joke. There's like I'm not. There's I'm a not. very long runway towards oh, it. Really. Honestly, was it Prince? Uh, Yon Yon yes, that was the Prince. Okay, yes. so oh, all right, there's no joke there. No, there's no. Sorry, oh, that's a shame. Uh, no, it's uh, Prince Prince Yonchan, and then it's Taiwan okay. Yonchan, and that was 1960, 61. With, 61, yeah, Prince. Yeah, okay. Oh, yes. So, uh, so uh, we uh, we've. Found three or Clive has found us three films that are, are related to that film. Um, but this, well, this is the direct sequel, right? This is oh, uh, this is yeah, yeah. Again, Made Shin Sang Hyuk, yeah, same actor mm -hmm. playing Yeon San, Shin Young Kyun, and uh, uh, Nam Kung Wu again, who we've ended up watching like quite a lot of films with him in mm -hmm. uh, more than we expected, I think, uh, in the past. Uh, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, effectively, I would say this is really just one film. Kind of split into yes. two parts, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this is this is Pak Gun Yonsan or Tyrant Yonsan. We're also going to talk about uh, the King uh, or King and the Clown from two thousand and five, um, which uh, deals with the same the same uh, tyrant, and then uh, the Treacherous uh, from two thousand fifteen. They're all um, Yonsan stories, basically. Yeah. Um, so. Hmm. That's me done. Uh, that consider that introduced. Okay, still waiting for the for the gag, but I guess no. it'll come later. Uh, I've maybe. got I've got my drumsticks. I'm yes. I'm waiting for the excellent. You've got the length of this talk to come up with a hilarious gag. So I'll see what I can do. Yes. Um. So yeah. So who wants to jump into uh to, to tyrant here? Right. Um, okay. I so guess it's a it's a tournament film. It's another yes. tournament film. Mm -hmm. Right, which automatically means it's good. Okay. <laughs> Not um, really. <laughs> well, I will say, I suppose the only thing that differentiates this a little until it's... I no, I noticed the difference, the main difference between... So Prince Yonsan lays all the groundwork about how he discovered about how his mother was hard done by and killed and all of that. Mm. And I will get to this because it comes up in the other two films. Um, yeah. More, there's more stuff about how we know, how we know of this is the the annals right the 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 the, the annals of the Chosun dynasty, and it, it's quite interesting, especially when we get to the latter two films we were talking about. I was reading up about this, and there's some controversy about it because it seems as if uh, it's, 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 it's we'll get into this, especially with the treacherous right. But it's interesting about, and we were talking about this before when we were talking about. Who was the, who was the, you know, the the Empress Dowager woman we watched some films about, right? And how each one had a very different take on whether she was a, mm, a monster a or not. Or, yeah, yeah. And who's writing the histories and stuff like that. So there's some interesting, if you want to go down that uh, burrow, there's some quite interesting stuff online about, well, who was writing these annals and mm -hmm. when... Korea was under occupation and stuff like that, and how some people might have rewritten the history to have made, uh, you know, the his the history of Korea seem kind of like more savage and dark than it was, and and so is is all quite so. All of this is um to be taken with a grain of salt to a certain mm -hmm. extent, right? Um, but yeah, so the first part was that, and then the second part is basically yeah, how he, I guess. Uh, suffering from a certain amount of PTSD became, yeah, the most notorious. Uh, it kind of, especially when we get to the third film, it's <laughs> he's very much <laughs> he's he's the Korean Caligula, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean Caligula, Caligula. We need to save Caligula for the third. Treacherous, film. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this doesn't really go there. It's a slightly more measured. No. But what I was going to say, the overall thing I took away from it, as compared to Prince Yonsan, was Prince Yonsan was. A uh, very much um, full throttle melodrama in the way that you might expect. I thought Tyrant Yonsan 
dialed down the melodrama. Uh, this seemed a lot yeah. less histrionic than previous film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe until the very end, and then it gets almost yeah. humanly kind of. But I, I, yeah. I think, but I think it had a lot of action to pack in. So I think it had a lot of, it had a lot of drama and plot points to to pack in. So you've got yes. the whole. I forget what they call it, the the kind of gathering of women. Um right. So, yeah. So 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 this is this is all and, about and the kind beauty, of beauty recruiters or whatever. I think that they uh, Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I did I did write it down in another mm -hmm. review, but I can't find it. But anyway. But there's 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 this term that's used for um um Yon Shan basically sending out an edict to just go and get me all the women. Yeah. Mm. So I can see which ones I would like to fuck. I mm. think it was called the Beaver Patrol. It was <laughs> yeah. Beaver Patrol. That's Beaver what I... Patrol. Here's yeah. a question. Here's a thing, Darren. I wonder if this, yeah. uh, this will either surprise you or you already knew it. One or the other. There's no middle ground. Of course, Beaver Patrol, popular, yeah. classic. Yeah. Cover version. It's not, is it? And not only that. No, I didn't know that. The original is from like the sixties. No. Yeah. Okay, Clive. Look we it are. Up. No. You're gonna you, you're gonna be doing better than that. Oh, okay. You're I'm gonna, gonna be making the patrol. The original version. It's yeah. It's it's because it's in one of the. It's on one of those um, nuggets compilations. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and I was shocked as well. Yeah. It's quite rude. Yeah. Sixties. Mm -hmm. Really fucking rude. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to put that at the end, or the beginning. Yes. I think. <laughs> As my, you know, Darren, the best way I, of getting kicks is to go downtown and hustle chicks. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what is that? What are the ideas of getting kicks to go downtown and hustle chicks? Beaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, but this, this, is, but this, is, this is it, isn't it? This is, this is now... This is the like the descent of Yonshan into his mm. kind of maximum debauchery. Yes, um, it's him but, wallowing in his own, uh, you know, whatever crapulence. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. I I think the height of it, I mean, probably is making a demoted lord who is now a farrier lick a horse's hoof. I, I think that's kind of yeah, uh, that's yeah, and that was it goes. Yeah, and, that's kind of unnecessary as well, wasn't it? That was kind of that was kind of gratuitous. Yeah. If we if we think about the context of 1962, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of that's that 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 in itself is pretty hardcore, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, as we found out, in the 60s there's filthier than you thought because you got Beaver Patrol original version and horse mm -hmm. horse hoof shrimping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do like the movie begins basically with him. He kind of he's struggling. He has this kind of Gilgamesh moment where he's thinking about his mom and her passing and about how all the you know the nature of death and how people pass on. And then he decides he goes full like um, we're going to live the next ten years. It'll, it's going to be YOLO all the time. Um, and he then he does. He makes that happen. He just he lives life to the fullest. I mean, it's really a feel good movie when you get right down to its core. I think it's about one yeah. man. Uh, you know, facing up against uh, you know the inevitability of death and finding a way to rejoice and enjoy every day. Yeah, yes. yeah. Positive takeaway from from this. <laughs> That's pretty much from Tyrant uh, Yonsan. Yeah, yeah. But you've got this. You've got this retainer character. Well, not retainer. You've got this kind of. Uh, so the actor is Do Do Kung Bong playing Jang Nok Su. Is he Hun Shi Worm Tong? Is that? So he's he's the one that doesn't take any shit from the emperor. So he's the one that actually okay. fights him, fights him in the tournament, and then just berates him. Right, right, right. This is the yes. whole time. Yeah, yeah. And he shows up in the other movies we watch too because he's a, he's a historical figure, right? Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, a different yeah. name. He's got a, he seems to have a different Park. name in the other in the other Park. films. Right, yeah. Wong something Park. Park. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's the one who's basically kind of he's the one ultimately working towards his. Downfall, right? Because that yeah. thing we get in all three yeah. books is is, yeah. is a kind of a palace coup occurs, right? In quite quite different ways in each film, but 
I, yeah. as far as I know from reading about it, the one they have here is fairly accurate that he was basically exiled to an island um, and he died not long after from, and I think they even, they got his four sons to commit suicide by drinking poison. <laughs> yeah. By, um, the, the guy who took over from mm. him. Um, I don't think there were actually any pigs involved as in... <laughs> no, we're, we're, no, we're yeah. going to get... We're gonna get yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting though because it's, it's, uh, even though it's a different version, I mean, it all seems to have basically the same trajectory that there's a sort of, um, and this is interesting because I'm wondering if this is a movie convention rather because I couldn't find this in any of the histories. But then again, I didn't read too deeply. I don't know if there was actually this female spy character within the palace. Mm who helped, you know, the, I could be, I mean, it would kind of make sense that they would have tried to put someone in there, right? But, um, mm. but again, I couldn't find this in my very, you know, just quick, brisk kind of looking over the historical record. I didn't sit down and actually read the entire annals of Joseon dynasty, although I am kind of tempted. It looks pretty juicy. Mm -hmm. bit, although I would imagine it yeah. might be quite dry to read it in there. You want a, someone yeah. to do a historical, uh, it probably is, right? Some kind of historical um, fiction version with all the juicy bits in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it it seems, but it seems that I mean, it's 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 fairly kind of straight up and down, really. This one, isn't it? In that it's you, you you've had the you've had the kind of sympathetic ish portrayal or realistic human portrayal of Yongshan in the first film, and this is the second film, and this is. This is his descent. This is this yeah. is him, him just just bowling down. Mm. Um, you know the, the the depravity of power and the kind of lust that comes with that and all that. Um, you know, and then you know towards the end it gets into proper psychosis, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> for 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 sixty two, you know, I think we're doing quite well, actually. Yeah. You know. 62, you know, he's he's dressing people up and strangling them and he's yeah. he's cavorting with all the wives and it's pretty depraved, you know, it's not graphic. Yeah, not you know, it's not you know, it's not got tits and panties in it, but mm. it's it's it, it's it's I think it's a good expression of you know, sort of corrupt depravity. You know, yeah. on the yeah, what, what, the, what's yeah. intimated? What's intimated is enough, and and you really do yeah. feel the pain of these various husbands and fathers and yeah. and yeah. sisters and mothers at their yeah the abuses that their mm. families are kind of subject to, right? Again, um, though, I think it does fall a little bit into that trap we were talking to. We were, uh, we were talking about the first film. We said it does fall into that trap that a lot of for for whatever reason it's very difficult to say why, but there's a certain type of historical kind of fiction film that um I don't know if it's because it's obligated to to hit certain points. It's it's it 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 doesn't like the narrative is a little bit um they don't take much in the way of artistic license. So it, it's a, a slightly humdrum way of telling the story this happens that happens this happens you know what i mean it's it's like like the first film the first film didn't we, we you know it was fine but it wasn't great and i feel this is pretty much quality wise it's about the same the two fit together yeah. obviously and um, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. it's not you know it's not a it's not a great historical film or great historical epic but it's not a bad little epic starting point if you did kind of just want the, if you wanted the baseline Yon San story mm -hmm. told fairly straightforward in a conventional way, this works, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think yeah. watch, watching this version first, which is what I did, because I watched these two parts before I went to the later films, worked in a way that we talked when we did um, the Lotus uh, Pan stuff, right? I felt like we watched that, the full version getting the full scope of it, you know, uh, first and then, and then watch some of the, the other films we watched. This was good for me because then I could slot yes. the other films we watched into yeah. this frame of it. Okay, I get where this is taking place in his reign. 
I get generally who these characters are and what this is all about. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I did as well. Yeah, yeah. And then combined, got the overview. And then, yeah, the other two are like tales from, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, But there's some stuff that I think is, you know, fairly sophisticated emotionally. Like there's, there's a part where where um, our kind of our I guess our hero like uh, you know Wan Jong, um, where his wife is she's one of the women who's taken right by the king and she says to him like my body may get dirty but my heart will be pure and and he has to kind of cope with that like he has to kind of make they have to both make sense of this yes I'm gonna have to have sex with this monster but you know yes that is not a mantra Nick that you say before every one of these YouTube videos we do is I do I do indeed (laughs) (laughs) process of compartmentalization where I can just (laughs) shut up things that uh, would otherwise cause me great pain I also like the fact that the king is really portrayed as having like um which in all of these words as as having uh, what's clinically called oppositional defiance disorder Oppositional defiance disorder, yes. Um, so basically, uh, that's like as an actual clinical uh, whatever condition where if I say go left, you will say fuck you. I'm going right. And I know someone who has that. It's it's quite. I mean, it's quite a serious thing. If no, um, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. If um, yeah, I mean, uh, people who are diagnosed with it have basically a fifty-fifty chance of ending up in jail like it's if you don't outgrow it basically um by your teenage years you're like the yeah, the likelihood is you're not gonna you're not gonna do well um so yeah there's a lot of moments in this film where people come and try to reason with him or tell him something and he, he tells him directly if you fucking tell me to do that i'm going to do the opposite and nobody ever seems to learn this like granny and i'm not wrong right he doesn't act we don't see him kill his granny in this version which apparently he did do in real life, and then he does do in one of the other. Hmm. Yeah, uh, we definitely do see that. I think in the King and the Clown. I mean, no, it, seems, it seems perfectly yeah. reasonable to me. I mean, um, yeah, I think we all have that to a certain degree, right? If someone, depending on the person, if someone insists that you do something, then of course you're going to do. But not if it's not if it's not in your own interest. Like he, like no, 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 case, no. If people uh... do it literally. They will literally cut off their nose to spite their face. Kind yeah, of maybe. Thing. Sometimes. Sometimes it's worth it, right? Depending on who it is you're, you're pissing <laughs> off. Or... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he definitely is the poster it's a, child. It's a spectrum, clearly. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. sure it is. But he's the poster child for ODD, for sure. But yeah. this, anyway, I was going to say, there's a scene quite near the end that I really like where the king's kind of doubled down again. He's been visited by the spirit of his dead dad. And he's, he basically says, like, oh, I'm sorry. And his dad is like, it's too late for apologies, asshole. And then the we forest, smash. Right? Yes. yes. And then we smash up to him again, partying hard. But this is the scene where he puts. We, we don't go and visit uh, Bob Cratchit's house and see. <laughs> no, <laughs> sadly not. Um, but then there's this there's this scene where, um, yeah, he everyone's kind of in masks, and then he he puts uh, Nok Su, who's a character who I don't know if we talked about her much in the last one, right? But she's this kind of the royal consort, and she shows up, I think, in all of these versions we, we're going to watch. Um, and basically, he puts her on the throne, and he makes her the king, and then he starts to uh, harangue uh, Nick, her. Nick, Nick, Yeah. You jumped forward to the king and the clown. Well, no, that's know. this. No, that's no, this, this one. Is, no. Yeah, yeah. This, so he starts haranguing her as though she's the king. She's wearing the crown, and he's telling her, like, you're a terrible king. People are suffering. What the fuck's wrong with you? And she starts to laugh at him. Oh, that's laugh- right. It's in this in one. Right. Yeah, quite right. Yeah. And then he yeah, fucking yeah. kills her. He yeah. strangles her right. yeah. to death. And it's this really strange... Oh, it's an interesting scene, isn't it? Because he's full out criticising himself, but he's got to yeah. see for himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That, that was an interesting scene. And, yeah. and, yeah. and then and then he begins to kind of repent as well, isn't it? It's, it's like... Because like, it's like the revolution has already started. Mm-hmm. And right. all of a sudden, he's kind of changed, you know. He's but that's, changed say, that's something yeah. they pull here. They don't do in any of the other versions. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of ironic, like, he's finally maybe seen the error of his ways. Yes. Yeah. But actually, actually, your Dickens thing is perfect for that, actually. Because I think it really is that, it's that moment of, like, he wakes up on, on Christmas morning, <laughs> determined oh, to do Nick, good. You're but a then, like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, anyway. Dickens. Yeah. But it's like it's like he, he's screwed, right? But yeah, unfortunately, there's been an uprising. 
<laughs> yes. Unfortunately, yeah. the workers have seized the means of production mm, and yeah. are going to just fucking guillotine Bob Cratchit is there yeah. with, uh, you know, an axe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also love the fact that, like, there's a scene, so the Queen, who's also, like, uh, he kind of goes back to his Queen, because he has one in this version, right? Mm. And he's been very dying off screen for the entire film. Comes back, oh, sorry, I didn't notice you were dying of TB or whatever the fuck she has. Yeah, right. Um, and then she chases after him when he's being finally being exiled at the end. And, and they actually have a literal, like, um, I'm not crying, you're crying moment, um, which, is, which is great. Um, yeah. It was a bad move to speed it up and put Yakety Sax on the soundtrack, though. I it was that, a bit. Yeah. That spoiled yeah. that scene a little yes. bit. Um, yeah, he doesn't quite, you know, you don't really get him hacked to death and his head kicked around the square like you would want. It's not yeah, really, but that, that's the problem. And I'm just sailed off into the distance. You're like, okay, yeah, but I, I wrote the same thing down, right? And at the end of the last one, you know, I kind of put in my notes, ah, I would really like a satisfying rebels take control, mm -hmm. execute the king moment, new yeah. era, but that didn't happen, but, so. but that didn't happen in history. No, I, I so think the second is, film yeah. we're about to take talk about did that ending quite well. Because yeah, 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 they sure. Yeah. They didn't have to tell a lie, but they also kind of gave you the gift that that potentially might have happened, right? Well, mm -hmm. I think I think both films actually do that reasonably well in their own ways. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shall so, we? Um... So 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 the the, the classy the classier of the next two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I. My least favorite of the next two. Really? Okay. No, yeah, yeah. My favorite. Uh, my, my favorite. Mine too. We are on the same page, Darren. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. as are the people of, of South Korea, because this <laughs> King of the Clown 2005 was a monster runaway hit, right? I think it was like the biggest domestic hit until Parasite or something like that. Wow. Um, I think, yeah, this is one of those films, yeah. like everyone's seen it in Korea, right? Um, um, yes, uh, I should mention another Yon San film we couldn't get our hands on. There's one from 1987, which I would have quite liked to have uh, seen, as directed by In Kwon Pike, who is a director I rather like. Uh, he made like a village, uh, village of the Hayes, which is a really interesting um, film, and uh, but couldn't find a copy of that, unfortunately. So yeah, so we jump forward 2005. Um, to our double bill of well, they are they are Yon San films, but yeah, like we said, they're tales of Yon San's reign kind of thing. They're slightly more specific characters. Uh, this one directed by Lee John Ik, um, uh, co-written by him and Cho Seok Kwan, and based on a play by uh, oh. Kim Tai Wong. So we get a little bit of uh, we let we get a little bit of potted history. So just in case you haven't just watched. Um, mm -hmm. two 60s films, you know, you're all right, you're fine. They kind of put you in uh, the place um, historically. And we're right in the middle. So, yeah, we're, we're done and dusted with the grieving over his mother bit. We're mm -hmm. into psycho tyrant Yon San mm -hmm. territory, right? And um, the actor does a great job of like, um, being kind of flat like he doesn't go balls to the wall like like the fella we're going to talk about when we get to the last film mm. um but there's something about his performance that that is quite unnerving there's something kanye west about his performance i think this kind of like perpetually i was, I was not expecting that <laughs> <laughs> kanye west, but yeah. um but kind of this kind of perpetually sour kind of when he smiles it's more like a kind of a feral unlike masking of the teeth than actually any kind of real mirth yeah, I he I mean he's scary, right? Yeah. Yon 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 San so that's uh Jung Jin Yong, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh sorry, no, you're right. Yeah, Jung Yong yeah. Jung Yong Jin Yong is the king. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and yeah, so he's he's not a cackling maniac. No. He's sometimes a cackling maniac, mm -hmm. but generally He's just a bit scary because mm -hmm. he stares at you two seconds longer, and his than eyes you think he's going to stare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and not and it's and that's a really fucking good performance. Yeah. Because that I, 
fucking scared of him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I found myself um, tense a lot of the time when the char other characters had to interact with him. I was like, oh, yeah, what's going to happen? If this is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it's not it's not over the top. It's it's it, well, it's not subtle, but it's it's mm -hmm. convincing. You know, yeah. this is obviously a murderous psychopath who is unfortunately the emperor and can kill 10,000 people with a word. Mm -hmm. you know. um, so our other main characters are a couple of street performers. Uh, in, uh, so you have Kam Woo Song, who is the kind of, uh, he's the butch one. And mm -hmm. then we've got uh, Lee Jun Hee, who's a, a, a very beautiful man. As kind yes, of uncomfortably, uncomfortably beautiful. I, I was, I was discomforted by what an attractive young man. There's no is. need to be uncomfortable, Nick. Just go with it. <laughs> um, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous person. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yes. And what's interesting about this film as well, I think, is that it's not really. It's kind of intimated, but it's not necessarily set down in stone that they are lovers. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. I definitely think it's uh, it could be a very very deep platonic right. love. I think right. it's no question it's love, but but whether it's a romantic love. Or no, like I mean no no I mean that's brotherly. They they are they brother. are no they are lovers. They are. I I, I I agree with you. Million percent. I, I think they are lovers <laughs> as well. But it's interesting that they do play it that mm. that it could and in general that's the one. Um, thing about this film, I think, which is one of the more interesting elements of the film, is uh, the LGBTQ-ness of it, right? Mm. Like, I, that part of it is quite interesting because it doesn't shy away from it, but 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 neither is it kind of specific. They kind of let you decide because obviously when the king falls, you know, we don't see them having sex either, but clearly he's physically attracted well, he's smitten, isn't he? I yeah, and also smitten, it's never it none of the yeah. characters raise it up either, which is what I kind of find interesting and also maybe historically accurate that the, that there is no gay shaming or anything like that. Like it's not even it's not even a consideration. Hey, hang on, that's a bloke you you fancy. Nothing like that, right? It's mm. just um, it's just kind of front and center. And I found that way of telling the story very interesting. And plus, I don't think it was. I don't think it's a cop out. I don't think they decided to do it that way because people would have been uncomfortable with on screen homosexuality, you know, although that actually may be the case. But I don't think that was the filmmakers. In That's how I read it anyway. Does anyone disagree with me? I thought it was a stylistic no, I mean, choice that was. Yeah, but it, this this film is. I, I interpreted this to be unapologetically accepting of. LGBT plus relationships in this context. Yeah, so I, I was. It's it's clear. It's for me. It's clear yeah. that they are in a relationship, and in fact, um, uh, Gongil, the character Gongil, mm -hmm. is clearly um, the object of romantic attention from yes. uh, Yoncha. I was wondering, um, and it's. Oh yeah, yeah, does for sure. Film, does this film have like other than being just a monster hit in Korea? Does it have uh, much of a kind of uh, queer cinema uh, footprint? Is it like a you know? Is it? I, I don't know. I, I'm guessing it. No, it must be notable, right? I'm guessing. Well, I was, a... I, I was, I was kind of hoping because I was pressed for time. I was kind of hoping someone might have looked into the context. Right. Um, of no, LGBT. I finished watching it earlier today, so that. Oh, I'll okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that. I'm I'm similar, but I was kind of hoping that. It, and it, you've been whacking off about Lee Jong Gi the rest. Of I the have time. been actually. Yes. Right. No, I. It left me. I will say, uh, unashamedly, it left me sobbing, um, on my couch. My wife was like, "Is, is everything all right?" I was like, "Yes, I've just watched a. I found a, a very moving film about uh, a real bro down." Um, whether or not there it was a romantic bro down or just a bro down, um, you know. I'm not uh, yeah. familiar with this phrase bro down, but the bro down, yeah, yeah, the bro, uh, yeah. Um, I'll show you what I mean when we when we see each other again in person. Quite. Sure, sure, surely you mean broke back down. That's what I mean. It's... Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that to mock 
anything. But no, um, no, it's it, yeah. I, I mean, for me, it's 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 unapologetically gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that is the yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Enough, that is the film. It often gets compared to it right? because it is a yeah. big mainstream film. That that that, that yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've never seen Brokeback Mountain, but uh... yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, but I'm I'm not I'm not necessarily the audience, so yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, yeah, no. So 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 uh, there there are a couple of street performers. We first see them kind of <coughs> usurping another kind of lesser street performer, a group of street performers. Uh, well, no, I think we first see them where where Gong. Oh yeah, we don't first being, see them. Sorry, you're quite right. He's yeah. being pimped. He's being pimped out by there. They have a troop leader, right? And he's being more or less pimped out by this troop leader to you know, uh, noblemen who want to have sex with a beautiful young man, right? Yes. And then this is partly why the character whose name is, I think, I, I refer to him as the captain in my notes because they start calling him the captain at some point. But right. like our butch lead, he is, you know, is increasingly frustrated at the way that he's being abused, right? And then yes. they basically escape together. And, and they kill him. murder as well and being on the run. Yeah. yeah. So then they take over this uh, street troupe, uh, which is um, led by, um, uh, what's his name? Yu Hai Jin, who's a, a great character actor face. You, you've seen uh, lo- a load yeah, of it. Correct. He's in, um, more, most recently, he's in that uh, uh, great horror film, uh, Exuma, which I would recommend, uh, like a shamanism uh, horror film. That's pretty good. Forgot to mention as well, uh, Lee John Gi, the pretty boy, is in Resident Evil 6. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, um yeah so yeah um so they end up taking over and then they so they also do this this rope walking act mm-hmm. right um which is quite impressive because they do this thing where they just they um <laughs> yeah they um <laughs> bump up uh what's the bounce up and down on their and down, right yes yeah. leading to the the line someone says are your eggs cracked or are they <laughs> safely in your crack uh, yes, something a paraphrasing, but mm-hmm. and then and yeah, and then they decide to basically they do this routine where they make fun of the, you know, it's common knowledge that the king has this kind of. I suppose she's the his main concubine, I suppose, right? Yeah. Squeeze and how much control she has over the throne. Yeah, you knock know. knock Sue. My one of my favorite lines of the film is. Um, where somebody mentions that she used to be a hooker that, that they all the street, you know, guys used to frequent before she became the king's consort. Mm. And somebody says, every penny I made went straight into her bearded pouch. Which mm. is a piece yeah. of dialogue. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So so they, they do this kind of quite bawdy kind of street play. And yes, they obviously they get into trouble and they're they're kind of they're, for basically they there's this kind of wage so there's a character this is the uh Kang Seong Yeon uh he's the, he's the kind of guy he's like a court minister and he's the one who's kind of a bit of a shit stirrer right like he's the one yeah. who gets the idea to bring this troop in and like get them to speak truth to power but beyond that to also maybe out other right mm-hmm. factions there's a lot of palace conspiracy and stuff like that so they come in very yeah they very are shakespearean pro- too it's very hamlet uh, as it goes on with these scenes of like these plays done in front of people that they're obviously directly attacking yeah, yeah. Right, and but it's, there's, there's also that line isn't there is that where uh what, what's the line the line is um well you know instead of sending us to prison let us perform this in front of the king and if he laughs, right. Mm-hmm. Like so that's the thing, isn't it? So yeah. they're they so they're they're on pain that you know their first meeting with Yonsan is they basically need to make him laugh with their bawdy play about him and his concubine, mm-hmm. um, or they're just going to get executed. Yeah, sorry, an error there. By the way, it was uh, it's Jang Hung Jun who plays that character. It's a uh, Kang Seok Yun is the um, is the concubine. Yeah, not so yeah, yeah. I think she's from the Taza uh, TV series. Taza is this long-running series of films and TV series about gambling, which is hugely okay. successful. 
Uh, not that I've seen any of them, but she, apparently she's from that se series. Mm. So she, so it's, I watched these, I, I watched these on water. I watched The Treacherous before I watched this one. Mm. And so the giant hair in this one, when, I, when it showed up, I was like, oh, so this is not just from The Treacherous then. This. No. You know what I mean? Like, because that wasn't yeah. in the series yeah, yeah, yeah. at all. But suddenly we start getting these like massive hairstyles yeah. on the ladies. It's like one. It's like uh, one of the creatures from uh, Basket Case Two and Three has that kind of moon head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should anyway. actually. The, we should mention uh, both this and Treacherous. Actually, uh, one thing you can't fault either the production design and mm. the costumes and stuff like that. Everything like that is fan fucking casting. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also thought that there's, there's no CGI assist in this film as well to things like some of the action, like some of the, the tightrope walking and the... Yeah. The, no, no, difficult, I mean, to there's... Tell. difficult to tell. I think some of it must be. Well, it's it's either way, it's seamless. So, oh, no, yeah, it's well I, done. I would, I, I, would, I, would say, I would say that the stunts in this, not that that's why you're watching it, mm -hmm. but the, all the tightrope stuff is riveted, actually. Yeah. I think if yeah. you look closely, maybe at some of the angles, you can imagine that maybe there's a it might be not the, yeah. thing just yeah, yeah. out of frame. Or, but no, it's it's done enough that you suspend your disbelief that you're quite impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these people no, are doing that very and good stuff. Yeah. at the same time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So yeah. So that's our yeah, and and uh, they kind of pass the test, and then they yeah, but that is out of the out of the frying pan. Yes, into the fire because right? now they they become. The official entertainment to a mad king. Yeah, right? well, what's Which interesting is... about it is is quite a funny line. They say that like basically every time they perform something as well, and the king enjoys it. Someone ends up dead. Yeah, someone dead. Gets killed, yeah. <laughs> Whoever they're kind of satirizing or outing or something, unbeknownst to themselves, yeah. end up sending someone to the fucking yeah. Torture well, because that's the or... thing, and you you've got this continual feeling of desperation amongst the troop, right? Because mm. the whole troop are terrified, apart from the two main. The two main characters, right? Yeah. So the whole troop are terrified. So we're going to get killed any minute. And then, then one of them just says, "Yeah, all right, let's take the piss out of all the ministers." Then, right? And then, they, and then the rest of the troop are saying, "No, don't take the piss out of the minister. They'll just fucking assassinate us," which they right. do. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And yet they persist. Yeah. So um, yeah. So this, yeah. This, uh, yeah. Like you said, it's the whole tightrope walk of speaking truth to power, being just cheeky enough but not crossing the line, yeah. and also they're being played by different people trying to get them to tell different stories. And so I, I'm, I'm on board. With, and, I've got, and of course, the king takes an interest in uh, Lee Jung Gi as well. But it's mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's played as re reasonably chaste. He just likes doing. Puppet and shadow theater and stuff. They, they do kiss at one point. There right. Is there a right. forcible kind of kiss. Um, and obviously, but then the song is outraged. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. consort's not very pleased about yeah. the whole She knows what's going on very yeah. early on. Yeah, you know, she gets pissed off and jealous. So and for me, up until this point, I'm fully on board with this film. Like, I think this film is really, really quite. Excellent. Like it's a really good yeah, yeah, yeah. historical drama. I really appreciate the queer angle. Um everything about it is top notch in terms of the production design, the acting, the camera, all of that is really, really, really good. And then kind of in the last, I guess the last third of the film or something, it doesn't lose me. It doesn't turn into a bad film or anything like that. But it just I don't know. I feel as if it slightly belabors the point and treads water and it, it's overall a bit too long. And then when we get to the very end, it's 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 really cranked up the the melodrama, right? which I don't necessarily mind, but it's you should know that it does get very, very melodramatic towards hmm. the end, right? And you either yeah. kind of have to go with it. Or it's not going to work here. Clearly, in Nick's case, it, me, yes. it worked all the way. I'm a sucker for. Yeah, I think that. it would have worked for me as well. I think if if there was a chunk in between, I know it's difficult to explain exactly where, but I found myself slightly drifting and it getting a little bit repetitive for a while. 
Um, and then it kind of pulls it back. And I, I really think that's enjoy fair. the final, the very final image, which brings mm. together the the the, oh. the coup as well, right? It's like a like a, that's really well done. Mm. That's really well because of of course that's going on the whole time as well, right? There's this this impending kind of coup that's mm -hmm. about to happen, more or less. So so for me, it just misses out on being really great. But if it, it sounds as if both of you didn't have this problem with it, no, no, I think I think there's a yeah. I think if 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 I was if I was in the studio or right if I was in the production team <clears throat> for this film and I was going to pick 20 minutes to cut out of it mm. then I probably would have picked the kind of in the last two thirds of the film there's this whole business about like pamphlets and flyers being sent out. yeah that's kind of the and they have to compare yeah. they have to compare the handwriting yes and, yes and 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 and, and one of the and and uh, sorry, uh, Gongil gets gets accused of mm -hmm. doing the players and they're up right. for execution. But it turns out that actually they learned how to write from the other one. And I think if you just remove that, yeah, you don't need maybe it's, it's, 15, yeah. it's a bit too much fiddliness. That's what I mean when I say yeah, that because yeah, yeah. I think they over either cut that or earlier. Because I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to establish the love and the bond yeah. between the two main characters, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many mm. times, right? So you could also yeah. cut if you kept that, you could also yeah. actually cut what might make more sense is actually cut the very beginning stuff where one guy murders the other on his behalf and they escape stuff. Because that seems a little if there was any, I, I'm sure there was a lot of artistic license. That seems like the thing they might totally have made up because mm -hmm. I find it difficult yeah, yeah, yeah. that no one ever tracked them down. No, I see. I, see I, no, no, no. See, I, I, I actually think that's essential because that puts them because that puts those characters on the run. And were they not on the run, they wouldn't have had the desperation to take the piss out of the king. So I think that's Maybe. probably. I think that's probably a decent trajectory, trajectory well, either trajectory way, to go on. Yeah. Either way, they they belabor that point a little bit. I think we Yeah. No, I think I think yeah, I think I you, agree. You, okay. There's a few too many times where the captain steps up once again to throw his life exactly in the way yes. of something that's aimed at uh, Zhang Ju. simpering, yeah. you know, uh, um, uh, Li Jong Gi. Like it's like yeah, that's what I mean. It's like okay, I've seen this, and the thing is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's done well, that's why it's, it's it's because it's done well, right? Because it's like you've you've made your point, so don't you don't have to do it again. It's like a it's like a slight wobble or something. It's like uh, oh, I don't know if we've made our point strongly enough yet. And you're thinking no, 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 mm -hmm. you're doing well. Don't you don't mm -hmm. have to do it again. You know, have yeah, yeah. a bridge of your convictions. Don't. But I I think this is a common thing in all sorts of. Big because clearly this there's <laughs> money in this film, right? Like big expensive um productions the world over. And and Korean films tend to run quite long as well. This is the other thing too. This is a, like a, a template, if you see what I mean. Um is sometimes, yeah, they I think that you know, with so much money involved, sometimes it's 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 uh, tempting to put a hat on a hat, right? Just to make sure the audience get it. Yeah. Yeah. So and and you know, this isn't worse than a lot of other films that do it. It's just because the rest of it is so strong, I, I'm I'm like, ah, that's a, like it's it's yeah. almost, I would say, it's almost like a minor modern classic, even I would say. Mm -hmm. Almost. No, I'm 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 I'll 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 put my hand up and say this is a this is a classic. Okay, okay. I'll say I'll, I'll I, and I'll, I would say, say it just misses is... out. Where do you stand? Yeah, yeah. I'm closer to where Darren is. I think, yeah. I I'm I was I was not expecting to be um Crying. as moved, as engaged, right. or as um or you know, I, and noticing some of those things. I mean, like it's such an obvious metaphor, the tightrope walk, and yet it completely works, and it's yeah, the, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I do um, appreciate. That's what I like. I said the melodrama. If you go with it, because the one. Think Korea does well because they've been doing it for fucking decades. Is they've nailed melodrama, right? Like they don't yeah. fuck about. They they 
they unashamedly go for that kind of thing, and that works. Yeah. It's only when you yeah. kind of have a wobble about it, it doesn't work, right? But if you, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I get the metaphor. Yeah. It's fine, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, a blind man on a tightrope mm -hmm. talking about how blind <laughs> he is and how much of a tightrope he's walking. Right, does right. Not yes. fucking work. No. no, but it does somehow, doesn't it? It does somehow. It goes beyond parody in a way. Yeah. So yeah, but it yeah, but it ne never once is it ridiculous. No, no. Or so, if it is, it's it's kind of has a knowing sense of it, so it kind of gets away <laughs> with it. See what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It it knows it knows what it is. It knows what it's yeah. doing. Yeah. And it's 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 managed to 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 get its hooks into you in that that. It's not. It's not twee, and it's not overblown. You know, something that I didn't know until I watched this film uh, historically as well was that um, uh, the ancient Koreans invented laser tag, right? Because there is that whole scene <laughs> where, so like, uh, that's yeah, a, that's the other podcast. Oh, right, photon. Right, you're right. Um, <laughs> no, there there is that bizarre manhunt scene with the arrows with the little balls on the end, which is very. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the guys are wearing masks. They got little, you know, shields on their bodies, so yeah. they won't get that bruised. Comes again, that's interesting. That's that. I th so I'm guessing that must be part of the annals, right? Is that was a thing. As for the specific story about the this troop, this acting troop that became the king's acting troop, I I have no idea if this is entirely. A fabrication mm -hmm. because the interesting thing as well is in this film not only is it not only is it a thing that's going on against the backdrop of the whole tyrant yonsan thing it seems to be like a specific uh extra straw that broke the camel's back for the rebellion to happen which is kind of mm -hmm. an interesting the, the, the you know it's it's all no people will get furious if they find out about this and of course yeah, it's I mean, that's... one more thing yeah, I mean, I believe it for a second, but uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's interesting that they went there, that they mm -hmm. put so much weight on it. Yeah. So I, I've, I, so I don't know if this is again. I don't know if this comes out of like you know one small passage somewhere in the annals that mentioned it in passing, and they or they just totally made it up, or in fact it's exactly happened this way happened. all the way down <laughs> with them jumping off the ropes as the, <laughs> in free spring I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that none of this is anywhere near the animals of your yes. yes i, I thought guess. it was probably yeah. yes. invented yeah. from whole cloth but it's yeah. but it's, it's a great invention it's a great yeah. intervention into history like yeah. you know yeah yeah i loved it and i would i would, I would recommend it to uh, Yes. To, to anyone. I would, Again, yeah. no disrespect. Yeah. It's not so much the annals, it's the annals, isn't it? Is what it is at the end of the day. Mm. I think you're getting ahead. Oh. I think that's the next film, Clive. I think sure, that's... Surely that's where you cut the Why? The feed. Nothing yeah. wrong. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the the back door. Yes, yes, well. Yeah, no, I I agree. Yes, but, well, there we uh, go. So, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, yeah. mine fell yeah. off though. Uh, uh, not were, that long ago. That's so, right. You don't have, have to have a man in to have it, yes. um, you know, be hung properly. Syphilis will do this. Well... <laughs> <laughs> the treacherous mm. from uh, twenty fifteen, right? Ah, here we go. Now I think we might not even need to bother talking about this film because mm -hmm. I found a IMDB comment. Okay. Which I think we uh, can agree is a brilliant piece of um, <laughs> film journalism, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to quote it in full. Uh, this mm -hmm. is, right, here we go. This is by user uh, Salesman Dragon's Touch mm. under the title... Please, please, please don't put my IMDB user ID out there. Okay. <laughs> Solid porn and gore. And uh, interestingly, it says warning spoilers, but I don't think there are any spoilers in this. But here mm -hmm. we go. I watched this on N, maybe Netflix. Netflix, I yeah. I watched this on N after watching the fairly lame but entertaining Yungyo ellipses, the muse ellipses, another K outing. 
really just trying to mind off Britney Spears ellipsis. She's still really hot ellipsis. Hotter than ever, in fact, ellipsis. Now 35 old, exclamation point. <laughs> well, this was a vast improvement. The sex here, really nice, ellipsis. Accomplished, ellipsis. Much better than porn tube or you porn. And the go inventive, I thought. Boy, living back then in K must have been a real rush, exclamation point. Love historical pieces. Still, though, dash, 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 my mind stayed on BS, so it wasn't completely effective. Nevertheless, give it a 10 for original go and great fun. Man, you guys want 10 lines? I think he's referring to the amount you have to write. Mm -hmm. to it up. You really like a lot of hocus pocus, kun? <laughs> Question mark. So there we go, the great man. Salesman Dragon's Touch <laughs> smoke it. So if if you need well, your I mean, he's, he's, he's obviously already in police custody, isn't he? <laughs> well, I think it's <laughs> no, no, like, like, you know, maybe there's other people watching us who need to take their minds taken off how Britain hot Britney Spears is at 35 old. So maybe this is the film <laughs> to do the I I would Love, can can we go through and find all of the reviews and see if all of them are him attempting to get his mind off? off. Watched Godfather 2, did not successfully take my mind off. Britney Spears, Britney Spears, five old, still hot, sexier than ever. Uh, <laughs> yes, you know what? I, I, retract, I retract that statement I just made mm -hmm. because, because that may be seen as. A, an indicator that gory or sexy films are not the useful outlet mm. for those who have who have urges that may manifest in public. Mm. So, so it's much better for you to watch some dodgy porn mm. or some good old ultra violence than to go out and go and do things to people. Mm. That's all I have to say to you, Darren. Is that's really a lot of hocus pocus, kun. <laughs> <laughs> he needed to fill ten lines. Who's Kun? <laughs> is he thirty-five old also? But still thing, is, thing, is, thing is though, thing is though, this this man has probably got 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 the name of this film on some sort of search alert. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. might we might be see we might be having him on the show next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that um, that Britney Spears show that we do. Yes. Yeah, because you know yeah. she's still she's still hot, thirty five old. Um, yeah. Anyway, but I thought that was worth talking hearing. Of, yeah, but talking of IMDb, and mm -hmm. you know, going back to our sort of at the start of the uh, uh, our our videographical essay as opposed mm -hmm. to the podcast, um, we mentioned Caligula. Mm, that's yes. something that uh, that's something that I latched onto before I watched this, and it was, yeah, this is a very Caligula, as in Malcolm McDowell and Tim DeBras, mm -hmm. um, yeah. a very Caligula-like film. Yes, that I picked up on another IMDb review. Turns oh, out okay. they were they were kind of talking sets. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Sort of. Yeah, ish. yeah, yeah. It certainly reminds me more of Caligula than anything to do with Britney Spears, um, <laughs> or, or or indeed Coon, or Coon, yeah. yeah. Whoever yeah. Coon, may. if you're Coon, let us know. <clears throat> um, and so that that is spelled K U N, isn't it? I assume it's, it's K U H N. Oh, that's oh. fine. So long as yes. it's not. Yes. Sorry, yes. but I don't think he was. No, no, no. I don't think <laughs> no. he was. Uh, yeah. No, we don't want to go there. No, no, we want to stay away from white nationalism at all costs, gents. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Tinto Brasses, the treacherous. Oh no, you misunderstand. <laughs> you misunderstand, Nick. Oh, uh, because in in we was talking Welsh, and coon is of course plural for dogs. Yes, it is, it is plural for dogs. Yeah. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't. Uh... Although, although moch moch might be uh, a more appropriate phrase. 
Yes. Which is plural for pigs in Welsh. Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I you know. which is a combination of both. Racist and uh, piggy. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, also it, it, neither. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A source. It's confusing for a little Nick. I do apologize. No, yeah. no, but I, you know, I do find it um, uh, heartening and saddening the fact that you guys have a complete command of your native ah, language. Now we're overdoing it. Complete command would be no. Okay, any uh, the ability to speak it and read it at all, then maybe <laughs> I, I feel that somehow, like w you know. I know some people in Ireland, the people out in the West, they kept it alive and they do still speak it fluently. But I just, I, I feel like you did a better job, Wales, of keeping well, the spirit of your language. No, no, alive. no, no, no. It's, it's the same in Wales. The, the, we, we, you know, by fluke of birth, you know, we, we come from one of the few okay. regions in Wales that are North is completely. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. So, where part, we are, so in Ireland we have the Gale Tucked, which is basically that part of Ireland where the language was not properly squashed. So yeah, yeah. No, the Welsh there's, equivalent. It, no, yeah. It's, it, yeah, but there, there are like not probably five or six pockets, you know, in the whole of Wales where people are born speaking Welsh, you know. Yeah. Or they are if they you went to Swansea, Welsh, but... for example, that seems that seems like little island of England, doesn't it? No one speaks. Yeah. Much yeah, so. and that's that's fifteen miles from where I come from. Yeah, so yeah, that's as well as well as the language. I've managed to keep my good looks. I'm still sexy despite being forty five old. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, regardless, me, me, me that too. makes me even more me jealous of you in a way that you have. Because uh, I I do think it's something that like if you if you know that your ancestors spoke a, another language, you know. Um, like there are phrases in Irish, or in, I should say in Irish English, that harken back to, the, they're basically, they've created on top. So things like, you know, she's after having a baby, meaning, you know, she has just had a baby. Um, oh, really? If someone said to me, she's after having a baby, I would I know, you would assume she she's trying to get pregnant. Have a baby. A baby. Yeah. Yes, and that's yeah. more of a, a British English or an American English. Like <laughs> that um, like that song by, whoever, who the fuck sings that song? The cause. That it's, it's the cause. It's the cause. Is another baby. Oh, no, it's uh, Daniel Donnelly. No, no, isn't it? Um, the Raw versus Wade band. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's the yeah. one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. Um, but uh, anyway. No, I just... No, I just... Fucking... Hang on now. I, 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 I must know this. This uh, 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 It's not hmm. everything but the girl. What are they... <laughs> you know, Ace of Base. Thank you. There we go. Okay. But there, there. That's who it was. Um, yeah. But no, you have you you, right? you both have the ability potentially to think in the language of your ancestors, and I don't. Yeah, have... Still talking about this? Yeah. yeah I, I think no. I, I, mean, think, I, I think the, we've lost a certain amount of our romantic soul. I feel in Ireland only by primarily having English as our mode of communication. Yeah, I think the same is true. For, I mean, the same is true for me. I mean, I, 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 I certainly don't think in Welsh, and I don't think it. Neither do I think in Welsh when I go back and spend three or four days speaking Welsh. However, if I move back to my area in Wales and I spoke a lot you more get Welsh, then well, I probably would get stabbed from where I come from. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd get stabbed in Welsh. Fucking hell. They go sorry. go fuck it. They won't go have that. It's a Danani. Yeah. Well, Yeah, anyway. Okay. Anyway. We should get back to the treacherous, maybe. Yeah, we should probably talk about Korean films on our Hong Kong based podcast. Yeah. We, I tell you, we do get around. Um, it's a wide-ranging conversation. Mm. Um, so yes. This one has some sort of pussy-shrinking salve in it. That's important to take away, I think. I think so. I got the recipe. Um, so, yes. <laughs> <this> is... <laughs> so, yeah. So it's I, I, I don't need the recipe because I'm <laughs> fucking enormous. <laughs> right. So we should say this probably, as well as Caligula being a huge influence, I would imagine the box office uh, box office success of King and the Clown as well 
right? I think they're not quite going after the same target audience. No, no, no. But I, th I think I feel as if there's a few things in here that felt almost like they're in it because they were in that film, as opposed to maybe they're because they're both drawing from the same right. historical source. And obviously, if you got, yeah, to... I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there's a long time. In between these two films, I mean, it's ten years between two yeah. films, isn't that? You know. Yeah, yeah, but I still, I still think it. I'm guessing that if you're going to do a film, anything to do with Yon San, King and Clown probably still looms large. You know, like in the same way as if you're going to make a film, like for example, when they when Roman Polanski made The Pianist or whatever, it was a lot of people couldn't get over the similarities to certain scenes in Schindler's List and stuff like that, because you're like, well, yeah, yeah. it's an unavoidable that you would, uh, you know, cover mm -hmm. certain... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's what, it's what happened, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, not according to some people well, on the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, yeah, so so this is really good. This, yeah, this is the full-on, uh, this is the full-on Yon San as fucking psycho... Uh, yes, person, right. Leaning uh, more, more into the sex stuff than we've seen in any of the previous versions. Yeah. I really, he's kind of this the, the semen king, the semen ching, whatever. Yeah, actually, yes, yes, of this character, right down to like the his, he's an artist in this version, right? Lots of him, yeah, leering at women with his. Well, he's dragging around with men by the hair. By the end, he goes brush. full That's Jackson right. Pollock. Yeah. Yes, yeah, in yeah, yeah, final yeah. scenes, yeah. Yeah, As yeah, played yeah. by uh, Kim Kim Kang Wu is uh, Yon San in this one, and I went. So we have kind of two female leads who. Um, so one is uh, the angel and the uh, whore, L literally the angel and the whore. It's yeah, like, yeah. So you got um, couldn't be more of a binary. You got uh, Lim Ji Yun. Uh, she plays the um, the butcher's daughter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, recently, well, who, who isn't? Right. Yeah, she's recently. Yeah. Uh, she was recently in that uh, uh, very good TV series, The Glory. I don't know if either of you saw that on Netflix. No. Quite a good revenge drama. She's she's in okay. that. She's quite popular now because of that. And then the other one is uh, Leo Young, right? She plays the other kind of seemingly more uh, scheming. You know. Yeah, she's more the concubine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a, she has too, a yeah. history yeah. as a prostitute. Yeah, and she knows how to suck a bull's cock. A dismembered yes. stock, we discovered mm -hmm. that. Uh, good seeing that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah, so the full-on, yeah. Uh, plus, as well, we have we have some kind of very spirited narration, right, by this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I quite like her. It starts off, it's quite, she's quite but then, ah! it's like <laughs> she starts almost Just singing. Right? Singing her, yes. I'm guessing this is a specific... This is a. I, I think there's probably a word for this. I don't know if it's. It's not pan. Sorry, is it? But it's some sort of like court, like um, res, I suppose we'd call it kidadros, right? Yeah, yeah, like it's, a recitation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Because there's stuff like that in Japanese as well. Like it, it, right, where you suddenly go from yeah, this kind of and, and there's all there's a melodic flow to the language. Yeah. it's almost like the benshi, right? The people who used to do the film narration is that. Kind yes. Of, but it's interesting because it, it, it it's not sing song all the way through, right? She she just says something and then all of a sudden, and then she goes back to just speaking again. And it's it's, it's quite an interesting uh, it's quite an interesting mm -hmm. device. It comes in every now and again, and it always uh, for me at least it always got my blood up a little bit. I quite liked when this woman yeah. reminded me what horrible things were happening uh, <laughs> in the near. yeah. So so this is very much about his. Um, well, it starts off, we get a little bit about the mother stuff again, right? Just as yeah. background and something to do with the cloth that might have belonged to that. Yeah, it's the same kept. dress. It's, I think it's the dress story again about this is the one his mom's supposed to have coughed her blood onto what actually right. Was poisoned, right? Yeah. Although in this version, it turned out to be. Yes, it's actually yeah. been deliberately kept to maybe keep some fire of conspiracy alive that isn't true. I, they, yeah, they, they don't fully go into that it's it's not totally resolved right but it's just it's one well, more I, I think it maybe was i i feel i feel like it's pretty clear that it's an invented piece of yeah i guess so but what i'm evidence is, and it I, really belonged to this one guy's actual uh, wife who did also poison herself and died yes but what yeah. i mean is i don't think it goes into full it, it takes i think a certain amount i think it, it 
assumes that the audience so it doesn't oh, necessarily yeah. back up what that means. Yes, so yeah. You, you, you find know. out it's it's fake, but you don't understand what exactly the ins and outs of what that would entail, right? Because I think they assume people know the Yonsan story. So at, at the beginning, when they so when they flash on that, and then we okay, this is this is why he he has his first kind of he goes ape shit and has his first purge, right? So in that scene, there's a scene of that purge where it's just like a a round woman's face being punched in slow motion. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was just like, whoa! Well, and, and like the fucking morning star, like the fucking ball on the chin <laughs> yes. in, some, yes. in, in a woman's head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I love about this film as well is, and this happens a few times, and it's really nasty, is like, you're not even, like, if you care about such things, if you believe, you're not even safe once you're dead, right? Because your bones will be yeah. up and smashed just takes a to the and fed to some pigs. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's pretty full on. Um, and I have to admit, when this it took me a little bit to acclimatize. I guess for the first 10 minutes of this film, I thought, oh no, this is this is just silly. This is just really, really over the top hijacking of history. They're just gonna tell the cartoon version and and I'm and I'm not saying that's wrong. I think I think that is mm -hmm. yes. But I think after I acclimatized, I I really started to enjoy it. When I finally understood what it was, I was like, okay, fair play. This is this is really going for it. Right. It's so I'm, I'm gonna going guess I'm guessing that the moment that Clive is talking about is the moment where uh one of the two beautiful leads, right, um, is asked, you know, why the women have been brought to the palace. And she says, um, oh, we're royal palace piss pots of the best kind. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, I, I'll check the credits to see if there is an additional dialogue by Clive. See, David. <laughs> in there. Um, yeah. I, see, I, I, know, I, I resemble that remark. I Clive jumped on board with this film. <laughs> Be, I resemble being... that remark being demonized <laughs> once again. <laughs> but no, but but I don't know how you felt. I, it just it, it took me off guard at first. And I thought at first it was just like because I was I think it was because I was expecting something a little bit more along the lines of King and the Clown, I suppose. Um, yeah, I was I was definitely expecting something a bit classier. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no. This is this is a proper like Chinese torture chamber style yeah. peace fest. No, this, like, is, this is Full, full on exploitation yeah. cinema. Yeah. Done yeah. really well. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. really well. Everything all of that yeah. But it, it felt like, like uh, go on. No, I was going to say, it felt like, like the king and the clown feels like it was, you know, for your Oscar it, consideration. That's exactly and what I thought. This feels like it's for your no, Van, this Van Gogh, for, yeah. uh, whatever, <laughs> trash <laughs> masterpiece. Yeah, well, uh, that's the thing. I was watching this and I was thinking, damn, this, this is what this is, to be honest, this is what adults should be going to watch in theatres. This is should be what the fuck your spandex assholes. This is <laughs> bro. This is not kids stuff, right? I, mm -hmm. Kids stuff for kids, fine. But mm -hmm. why aren't grown ups going to go and see proper fucking flesh and blood films like this? Because you know this is good fun. It's mm, good it's fun. fun. And I, 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 learn I, I have about history yeah. and, and pussy salves. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in the West, in the West, I, I, it, it good, actually, good question. Um, and I, I feel like in the West anyway, mm. and we're going to get on to where Korea's at with this specific subgenre of gory sex exploitation sexy gory cinema, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I'll get onto that in a minute, but in the West, it's it's all about you know hostel and yeah. soul yeah. and the shit that is the shit that Eli Roth does that's yeah. just fucking bullshit, frankly. Right. Um. Um. So yeah, I I I agree with you. I agree with you. Yes, we should. Just be looking in the to... just just looking in the group oh. chat here, Eli says, "Fuck off, Darren." That's nice. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Darren says, "Eli, come and fight me," um, because you're <laughs> obviously some sort of 
fucking pussy. So please crack on. Without the salve either. All <laughs> all, all loose and yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah like Wizard sleeves. Up. Although yeah, exactly, we did yeah. learn as well from this film that they actually do need to be moist and wet at all times as well, because they sit on the pieces of paper, right? And they have the <laughs> it's like, the, like the potato, like the potato prints you do at school. Yeah, yeah, very much similar. Yeah. So you ideally should be leaving a kind of a slug trail wherever you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but it's it's no, but I mean it, it, the point I want to make though is yeah, of course we should we should be having unapologetic exploitation cinema. Hmm. In this day and age, I have no fucking problem with it. However, um, this film did seem somehow out of place, right? This, this this film, and maybe it was me getting Caligula in my head and the kind of 70s exploitation, mm-hmm. late 70s, early 80s, gore exploitation, sexploitation stuff in my head. But this film did seem somehow out of place in terms of um, not the content necessarily, not the level of gore, not the level of uh, sex in it, but somehow seemed out of place in terms of kind of, you know, who it was for. Mm -hmm. How much money Um, was spent to make it? You know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all for it, and I'm all for exploitation, and I'm all for this sort of stuff. But you know, if this if if this was made in 1983, this would be a fucking masterpiece. But the fact it's made like in in 2015 makes me think. Well, what is the actual audience? What is the intent of making it? Um. Is it titillating? Somewhat. Is it kind of, you know, is it getting my go hound juices going to some extent? But, you know, is this is this kind of is this kind of after the horse has bolted? You know, is this just well is this just making is this just making Caligula in See, you know 40 I, years after Caligula and that, I, that I, I would disagree with it, not disagree with it, but I think it works. What I think is, I think it, I think it works perfectly well now. Because my feeling about it, and I don't quite know how how they've done this, is they've somehow moved the gold post, right? So I feel mm. as if this is, I mean, you know, not to overstate it, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not full with, it's not like hardcore pornography, and it's not, you know, it's not eyes spit on your grave or anything like that, or it's not, you know brain dead levels of gore or something. John but it, Demato did not. Yeah, do that. no, it's a full blooded. Proper uh, sex and violence exploit, classy exploitation film. But what I what I feel they've done quite well is without losing any of those elements, and obviously supposed to be being titillating as well as kind of you know having its cake and eat it. I didn't feel the level of misogyny that you would get from a seventies or eighties film. Like, I don't think this film is offense. Like, you'd have to be someone who takes offense very easily. Yeah, no, that's like right. play yeah, yeah. Front of men and women, you know, grown up men and women. And I don't think they necessarily find it offensive. They might not like it or they might not get on with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's an offensive film or a sex no, film. I- so, no, I, I, no, I, you're right on the misogyny. But they, but all the elements yeah. are there, right? So I'm. It's interesting mm-hmm. how they've done it. I'm not quite sure, but they have done it. So in a way, mm-hmm. I feel as if it is a, it is of the now because they have managed to do it in a somewhat. More, of course, it's now nine years old again. But if this was a new film now, I think it would, it would be as welcome as it was in 2015. Let's put it that way. Um, because well, the other thing is that for context, which I found quite interesting, so. The year after this, uh, Park Chan Wook's The Handmaiden came out, right? Which famously had like uh, quite explicit for a big major uh, film, lesbian scenes and stuff like that. And it was con- now obviously it was more controversial because more people saw it be- outside Korea because it's it's Park Chan Wook, right? So it played international festivals, it played all over the world, huh. and and everyone made a big deal about that 
sex scene in that film, which to me always seems a little bit silly. I don't know if you've seen that film, but yeah, yeah. didn't that didn't that scene strike you as a little bit that was out of place in that film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still like the film overall, but but it was interesting that this has scenes like that in it and so much more, right? And it's the year before, but uh no one seemed to yeah, mention at least well, that. In, uh, you know, talking about sexy, you know, I mean, there's that 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 scene where they've got the bows and arrows out on the executions, and yes. the doctor has to fillet mm. the yes. thing yes. in front of her dad, who's brilliant. Will, yeah, who will die if she doesn't fillet him, and then gets an arrow um, in the face. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's what I mean. I, what yeah. I like about it is they went that extra. They they did go gratuitous. They did go gratuitous, oh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. but they still managed to kind of I don't know. It, once I got on board, I was I was on board with this. I have to yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way through. Yeah, I, I, really I, I think yeah, I think I think what yeah, I, I, and I think it's it's the whiplash between the King and the Clown and this mm-hmm. that's right. making me that's making me criticize this. So I, this I is to, this I is the other one, which was strange for me because as soon as the King and the Clown started, I was like, okay, I'm I'm in very different territory than I just was with ah, you know what I mean? Um, and then in a way, I had to kind of get my brain around the fact that yeah, that we we're going to be in much classier. So I'm 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 a little bit I'm not I'm I'm clear actually. So you should probably spell it. How did you get on with the treacherous Nick? Because I'm not quite sure if you liked it or not. I think it's worth maybe just for a moment unpacking slightly how this film is different than the other films in that this one really focuses on these two politicians, the father and son team. Yes, the ministers, yeah, and, yeah. And this film was really all about kind of the um, trying to utilise somebody who was clearly fucking mad for your own ends and the dangers part of that. And it's also interesting because really, who is a likeable character in this film? Butcher like, Girl. Butcher yeah, Girl, pretty he's much. he's the only yeah. one. She's the yeah, only. Yeah, yeah. She's not really the protagonist. She's kind of a side character. No, no. She's not yeah, introduced yeah. for a while in the film, and then, yeah, she. Also, because yeah, so you mentioned her, it's worth mentioning another thing I like about this. Another grown-up thing I like about this film is I like when they don't spoon feed you things, right? Because something I don't think they ever actually say out loud, right? But I'm guessing just because I'm a grown-up person paying attention to the film. I'm guessing that's kind of some kind of coagulant that he spits in her mouth when he pretends to stab her to death. And then spoilers. Oh, yeah. She turns out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yet mm-hmm. there's no point where a character no. goes, oh, isn't it lucky that he spit that coagulant into your mouth? But, you know, it goes totally yeah. unsaid, right? I appreciate when filmmakers give the audience the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. That they're not stupid, or they can figure things out for themselves. You know what I mean? That's another kind mm-hmm. of that's in the grown-up element as well. Sorry, carry on. You just reminded me. Yeah. But I was just I'm thinking that you know, in a way, we saw the the example of the the much poorer members of society, right? Like the minstrels, and basically how they their interaction with this king, you know, is not a positive one. Um, and but they're trying to, in a way, trying to use him to some degree, mm-hmm. but not to the extent. That this pair, these these are really a scheming father and son team. Like they're kind of pieces of shit, and they're really the younger the younger one is really our main character. And yeah. I, it's kind of daring to make a two and a half hour nearly movie with almost no likable characters in it, um, and just hope to get by on the spectacle and get by yeah. on the, you know. And it, you, you know, think it, it works? Did it work? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, I, as I said, I I enjoyed it. Um, I just think. Having then watched the King of Gun afterwards, I I definitely walked away with the feeling that that's to me the better. But what was your before you watched that? What was your immediate oh, yeah. take on Treacherous before um... that? I was watching a Korean version of Caligula, basically. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And that it was done well, you know. Right. So that it was slick looking. The acting was I, like they they you know I was always surprised when they took it seriously. They took the dramatic scenes seriously because they don't have to in this yeah, kind yeah, of film. Yeah, absolutely. It's, but well, I never felt that they were trying to wink at me much when they were having those more, yeah. The, the quieter... thing that's quite interesting about it as well. So I, I spoke briefly about how there's some 
questions about the historical record of the annals because they're saying that some of it was written, for instance, under uh, Japanese occupation, for instance, and some people think that the Japanese might have kind of demonized. So it's ironic then that this film that to totally takes that stuff for granted as definitely having happened has all these kind of quite sly, I think, I might be overreading, but quite sly references to the Japanese occupation as well. I don't think... I, like, okay, I'm yeah. glad you read that up because yeah. I, I, I make a note like com comfort, comfort women. Comfort, yeah. I don't know what the original... training camps comes up over and over again, right? Yeah, I don't know what the original Korean word they're using was, and I don't know if that's the same word they use when they refer to the comfort women issue, but I, in the subtitles at least, I thought that was very mm. telling that when they go out and they grab all these 10,000 women, that they, we shall refer to them as comforter women and they do it again and again and again i'm thinking that's that's not an accident right that's not good that's a sly <laughs> bit of kind of um a little poke. so i so saw for the audience yes and actually for me right can you explain that concept oh, so yeah, uh, how to do this without getting into trouble? So, no, I, 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 I think that, I think so. I think okay. so. So in, yeah. during World War II, uh, the Japanese Imperial Army was stationed all over the world, um, or the areas that they controlled, and so they basically instituted a forced kind of sexual um, slavery of, of women in those countries, right? So they were basically taken and made to be uh, comfort women. women. Yeah, and particularly so, in Korea, this has been a source of great back and forth and it's been used as a political football for decades now and demanding reparations reparations are paid but then the the money doesn't get to the women apparently and then people claiming they didn't make reparations and there's statues comfort women statues going up they get torn down and yeah it's a whole massive bone of contention like right at the center of post-war Japan, okay. Korea, politics, and yeah. So I think yeah, you don't put that in your film, like uh, no, lightly. And it's also it's an easy shorthand to make a Korean audience fucking hate. Exactly, your, that's the thing. Or your your villain, if you yes. make him basically somebody who institutes yes. a, yes. a nationwide yeah. comfort women system. Yes. Right? Also, interestingly, so the director uh, Min Kyudong, who I only knew from, he made that uh, Memento Mori, the Whispering Corridors two, right, the sequel to Whispering Corridors. Not a bad little horror film back in the day, but around he also made a film about the comfort women issue called Her Story. So yeah, it's definitely something he's very, very aware of. And you know, he knows. So yeah, so yeah, I picked up on that as well. I thought, oh, okay, that's that's <laughs> that's definitely intentional, nice. I think. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and clever, as I said, because yeah, I think you can make you're gonna hate tyrant. Uh, no, I agree with you. I definitely think he's almost, he's like a proxy for wartime Japanese. Yeah. In, okay. in, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was interesting for the comfort with men. Um, and this, 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 this film does seem to kind of ramp, really ramp it up, mm. especially with the, the sort of comeuppance at the end as well. So, mm -hmm. right. You know, it's 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 the revolution comes as it does in all of these films, and you know our 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 our, our, our you know kind of redeemed minister hero decides to assassinate him, but doesn't assassinate him, and bungs him in a room with some pigs. Yep. First goes full carry though, because he first dumps an entire oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gallon of like what we assume was probably pig's blood, right? All yeah. over him. And yeah, I like a good oh. revenge. After and sorry, Koreans yeah. do revenge things well, right? Um, I was gonna say after actually there's this whole thing because it's intimated early, early in the film, and you kind of I wondered when it was first intimated, oh what what are they getting at there? That later on that they come back to it and they're like, oh no, that definitely happened that that our whatever our protagonist, right? that he had been involved in some sort of physical relationship with the king when they were kids, or maybe he was kind of made his, his mm, yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and then, it, oh, that's definitely what happened. So then, yeah, there's that element too, where he's he's sexually humiliated the king, he's given him a spanking, made him bear his arse, then dumps the gallon of blood all over him, and then, as Darren said, 
<laughs> yeah. releases I, the piece. I think, I think as well, it's kind of interesting to consider this in the con So obviously we, we uh, until, you know, a couple of months ago, we knew fuck all about Yon San at all, really. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. I think this would have been quite a fun, like if you I imagine if you were, if you were growing up in Korea and there would have been, you know, countless Yon San TV series is like, a lot, you know, even more torn down than the two Shinzang Ok films, just like really dragged out, melodramatic, histrionic kind of our, I don't know, our Sunday night equivalent of, or oh, it's Inspector Morse or Songs of Praise or Last of the Summer Wine or something. Mm -hmm. And then someone does, you know, someone does the Peter Jackson version of Last of the Summer Wine. And that would have been quite exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, finally, someone's done. Uh, uh, a version yeah. of the story. Like your, your son going over concubines with a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, they, 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 yeah, instead of rolling down the glen on a wheelbarrow or something, they, they put Nora Batty in it and fill it full of spikes like 2000. <laughs> Again, I think we've just added another to the AI films that we're going to make. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, Bad taste, bad taste, last of the summer wine. Yeah, yeah. That, that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last of the summer blood. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what the hell were we talking about? This so yeah, I I I and again, there's also a scene again, like it, it earns that that crazy melodrama stuff, I think, near the end. I think it pays off. Um yeah, it's I think a nice cumulative effect, right? There's yeah. a scene where he wants to, where where our 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 fucking hero, I guess, or what passive hero wants to die because he he feels like he needs to redeem himself. So he goes and he dresses up as the king, thinking that his girl that he's in love with will will put him out of his misery. And I was like, yeah, that's that works for me. I you know I like it when it's ramped to, to eleven. So do you remember? Because people always look at me like I'm mental, like I've made this up. No one else seems to remember this. Do you either of you remember? It might have only been one series. First of the summer one. No. See, no I, I, I'm starting to think people? I made this up, but no, I swear to God, there was at least for well, it must one. Well, it must be on the internet. Yeah, I can't look think. At, yeah, there was, there, was one, there was one season of Last of the so it might be listed under Last of the Summer but it was called First of the Summer Wine, and it was all those characters <laughs> who we've learned to love, uh, Compo, etc. But like when they were young men, and I think they worked for like a tailor's shop or something. They were, and they, could... it's all about snuff. They used to enjoy not snuff movies. They used to enjoy <laughs> taking snuff in the basement. No, and no, I, I've never, I've never seen that. First, I, it, it, sound, it, it does sound like the sort of thing that would exist in mm -hmm. maybe the early two thousands or the late nineties. Well, no, this would have been when I. So this would have been late eighties, early nineties, maybe. Mm, no, not, yeah, no, no. See, no one, no one else, obviously, everyone else had the sense not to watch this program. Yeah, did I, 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 of some of the last of the Okay. Movie. Norman Clegg's father is played by Peter Salas, who played Norman Clegg in Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. So I think that's a nice tie-in with the treacherous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah, makes absolutely. a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's the pig fucking that links it, really, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. The, yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, yeah. There's, there's no Over review. Yeah, yeah, of, it's, it's yeah, yeah. There's no review of um First of the summer wine by um, Sandman Dragons tattoo. Oh, oh. oh, sadly, it, yeah. Because I'm looking well, for recommendations. If, 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 yeah, yeah. My, well, if you watch it, what's his name again? Sandman. I, no, I wasn't Sandman. It was something Dragons Touch. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So if you're watching Dragons Touch, and no doubt you are, because <laughs> we're in your algorithm now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. then, and then please don't kill us in our beds. Mm -hmm. um, but also. Please do watch first summer wine, so we don't have to. And well, it might, please send, it might, us, well, it please might send take, us a personalized creepy message. It mm. might take your mind off Britney yeah. because it's still hot 
35 old exclamation yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. I wonder how, I mean, how much is he, how much is he consumed by thoughts of Britney Spears that he has to seek out cinematic entertainment to, to blot it out? Well, no. I, I think we're probably doing a service to this man by putting him on two last of the summer wine, which he may not have watched before. No, yeah, I, 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 you got... know, it's because there's only like six million episodes of it as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if he can, and if, if he's looking get... for me to kill his libido specifically, like if he's <laughs> really trying to tamp down any uh, excitement uh, in his life, then that's probably. You think he's not going to write Nora Batty, still sexy, sixty-five <laughs> old, in his <laughs> review of? Last no, time. yeah, I don't. But, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that if he does get fixated, um, you know, as Compo does, you know, and you know, yeah, that's Compo, true. Is, Compo is the every man of last yeah. summer wine. If he does get fixated on Nora Batty's wrinkly old tights, yeah, yeah, I'm fairly sure that actress is dead. Do you remember? So, it's it it's a it's a good outlet, you know. It's 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 a nice little dead end. Are we getting the, the hilarious I, episode I, of I, Last of the Summer Wine? Very very funny episode of Last of the Summer Wine. No, <laughs> no, it happened. It was no, very. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. It was during no. the, the summer fit, and mm. Coppo managed to sneak some pussy salve into Norma Batty's cup of tea. Aha, uh -huh. and then. Made her dance around his maypole. It was, mm. it was. Oh, one of the was the Shetland, <laughs> Shetland pony dick served to anybody on a platter? <laughs> but the pussy sound tightens it. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So well, I'm guessing not, we... not to throw shade on Nora. I'm guessing mm. she's not in need of of um, widening out. <laughs> Surely. That's that's well, I, don't know. I, mean, I, I, took her, I took her as a woman of the world, you know. Well, no, that's what I mean. She's very much a woman of the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know, I'm, I mean, how would you tell? You know, that's the thing. In one way to tell. <laughs> get stuck in there. Yeah, but he's been trying that for years. But that's what I mean. Anywhere, and he? he's that's why he's put the pussy salve in the cup of tea. To get him a yeah. bit of a tight snatch for the summer fit. Yeah, but she's not, he's not, he's, Compo's not getting in her, in her pants, is he? Hope springs a turn out of it. Well, I know, but, you know, where's the, where's the, where's the drama in that? Well, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. An episode where Compo would supposed to have in Nora Batty's. <laughs> I can think of few things more dramatic. So what's the punchline then? Where she has a cup of tea and goes... Well, no, he's finally like, oh, come here, Nora, or whatever. And, uh, yeah, she, he, she clamps on him like a ninja and he jumps up in the air for his frame and he doesn't have a cock or something like that. He's left it behind inside. Something yeah, but, like that. But, you know... Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Last because, of the summer cock. No, yeah, but how is it? How is it? So, are you saying that the pussy song yeah. is the route to Nora Batty's affections for Compo? No, Nora Batty doesn't give a shit. So no. how does he? So how does he get in her pants then? Oh well, that's another strand of the story. I'm just saying. You, no, yeah, I'm not you a screenwriter, it. Dara. Obviously, okay. you have to. Obviously, Roy no, no, or something no. has to be involved. Pussy salve, Roy Hipnell. Cup of tea, and then okay. call back and forth like, Ooh, "Well, Pompo, she's suppose, gonna taste that." I know her cup of tea is taste funny. He knows that, so I'm gonna put extra sugar and milk in there, or something. Something like that is gonna happen. I suppose a scenario exists yeah. where she gets the pussy salve, yeah, and then she, for some reason, you know, I'm sure it's excellent as is, yeah. but you know, it's extra excellent, you know, after the pussy salve. 
um, you know, where there's some sort of bath down the hill moment, and you yeah, know. you put it in the bottom of the bath, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, no, there's I, well, no, I mean, I mean, you know, it, it's like there's like a you know a slapstick moment where he enters her, you know, and you know, yeah, and then they run, they oh, and then they go down the hill on the bath. That's it. And yeah. then finally, when they reach the bottom, <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. There we go. Another right. one for the AI. Um, mm -hmm. not in short scope movie studios uh, line up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, until next time, where we might actually talk about some Shaw Brothers films, if you're lucky. Bye bye. Come on, let's do the music as we go out. Ba ba ba. Da, 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 da. This was <laughs> Last of the Summer Shorts. <laughs> you have been watching <laughs> some very silly people <laughs> indeed. <laughs>